Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters, welcome to the journey of quest where we quench your thirst of knowledge. Have you ever thought about the health of our planet's marine and atmospheric environments? We live in an age of unprecedented change, where the health of our planet's marine and atmospheric environments is more critical than ever. Our oceans, once considered vast and indestructible, are now facing immense challenges. Pollution, in its many forms, is infiltrating our seas at an alarming rate, from microplastics that are virtually invisible to the naked eye, to oil spills that stretch for miles. Our atmosphere is no different. The air we breathe, the sky we gaze upon, is under threat. Pollution once again is a major culprit, turning our clear skies into a haze of harmful particles. But there's another issue at hand too, one that isn't visible to the naked eye, but is equally, if not more, threatening the depletion of our ozone layer. This protective layer in our atmosphere, like a global sun hat, shields us from the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays. But it's thinning, its protective power is waning, and that's leading to a host of problems for our planet and for us. The impacts of these issues are far-reaching. Our oceans, home to a vast array of life, are becoming inhospitable. Coral reefs are bleaching, fish populations are dwindling, and entire ecosystems are at risk. In our skies, the thinning ozone layer is leading to increased UV radiation reaching our planet's surface. This can lead to skin cancer and cataracts in humans and can harm animals, particularly those in or near the ocean. We're not just talking about abstract, far-off problems here. These are issues that affect us as individuals, as communities, as a species. They affect our health, our food supply, our economies, our very way of life. So let's not turn a blind eye. Let's open our minds to the reality of our planet's health. Let's understand that the state of our marine and atmospheric environments is not just an environmental issue, but a human issue, our issue. Understanding these issues is the first step in addressing them. But what exactly causes marine pollution and why should we be concerned? Let's dive into the depths of this issue. Marine pollution primarily comes from three main sources, plastic waste, oil spills, and industrial waste. Plastic waste is the most visible and pervasive form of marine pollution. Every year, millions of tons of plastic find their way into our oceans, from plastic bags to microplastics, tiny particles less than 5 millimeters in size. These plastics can take hundreds or even thousands of years to degrade, posing a long-term threat to marine life. Then there are oil spills, dramatic and devastating events that can cause immediate and long-term damage. When oil is accidentally released into the environment, it forms a thick sludge that suffocates marine life and taints the surrounding water. The repercussions of such spills can be felt for decades. Finally, there's industrial waste. Factories and power plants often discharge harmful chemicals and heavy metals into the water. These pollutants can accumulate in the bodies of marine animals, leading to illness and death. So why should we be concerned? Well, marine pollution doesn't just affect the creatures that call the ocean home. The health of our oceans is intertwined with the health of our planet. Marine life, from the smallest plankton to the largest whale, plays a crucial role in maintaining the balance of our ecosystem. They help regulate our climate, provide food for billions of people, and produce over half of the world's oxygen. When marine life suffers, we all do. Furthermore, pollutants in the ocean can make their way up the food chain and onto our plates. Consuming seafood contaminated with harmful chemicals can lead to serious health issues in humans, including neurological damage and cancer. Marine pollution is not just an environmental issue, but a human issue too. It's a clear and present danger that we must address for the sake of our oceans, our planet and ourselves. We need to understand the causes and effects of marine pollution to find effective solutions. This is not just about saving the whales, it's about saving us all. Atmospheric pollution is another major issue. But what are its causes and what effects does it have? Let's start with the causes. The primary cause of atmospheric pollution is the burning of fossil fuels. This includes coal, oil and natural gas, which are commonly used in power plants to produce electricity. When these fossil fuels are burned, they release harmful substances into the air, including carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen oxides. These gases are not only harmful to our health, 
but they also contribute to the greenhouse effect which is leading to global warming. Industrial processes are another major cause of atmospheric pollution. These processes often involve the use of chemicals that can be harmful when released into the atmosphere. For instance, factories that produce steel, cement and chemicals often emit large amounts of pollutants into the air. Vehicle emissions also contribute to atmospheric pollution. Cars, trucks and buses that run on gasoline and diesel fuel emit carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides and particulate matter into the air. These pollutants can cause a variety of health problems, including respiratory issues and heart disease. Now, let's talk about the effects. Atmospheric pollution affects air quality, which can have serious health implications. Exposure to polluted air can lead to respiratory problems, heart disease, and even cancer. Children, the elderly, and people with pre-existing health conditions are particularly vulnerable to these effects. Atmospheric pollution also affects the climate. The greenhouse gases that are released into the atmosphere trap heat from the sun, leading to an increase in the Earth's temperature. This is causing a variety of environmental changes, including rising sea levels, melting ice caps, and more frequent and severe weather events. In addition, atmospheric pollution can lead to the depletion of the ozone layer. The ozone layer protects us from the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays, but certain pollutants can damage this protective layer, increasing the risk of skin cancer and other health problems. It's clear that atmospheric pollution has far-reaching consequences. Another critical issue is ozone depletion. But what causes it and why is it a problem? Let's tackle this head-on. The primary cause of ozone depletion is the release of certain man-made chemicals, most notably chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs. These are compounds that were widely used in the 20th century in air conditioning, refrigeration, and aerosol propellants. When released into the atmosphere, CFCs slowly rise to the stratosphere, where they're broken down by solar radiation, releasing chlorine atoms. Now here's where the problem arises. Each of these chlorine atoms can catalyze the destruction of ozone. They do so by stripping away a single oxygen atom from the ozone molecule, leaving behind ordinary oxygen. In this process, the chlorine atom isn't consumed and can continue to destroy more and more ozone molecules. This chain reaction leads to what we call the ozone hole. So, why is ozone depletion a problem? The ozone layer acts as Earth's sunscreen, absorbing the majority of the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation. If this layer is depleted, more UV radiation reaches the Earth's surface. This can lead to a higher incidence of skin cancers and eye cataracts in humans. Beyond our health, increased UV can also harm animals, particularly those living in or near water where UV can penetrate. It can also affect plant growth, which could have serious implications for agriculture and food security. But it doesn't stop there. Ozone depletion also plays a role in climate change. While the ozone layer itself is heating up due to the increased UV absorption, the lower atmosphere, or troposphere, cools down. This cooling can affect weather patterns and could potentially increase the frequency and intensity of storms. In essence, ozone depletion is not just an environmental issue. It is a human health issue, an animal welfare issue, and a food security issue. It's a global problem with far-reaching consequences, which is why it demands global solutions. Ozone depletion is a global issue that requires global solutions. So what can we do to address these issues and protect our planet's health? We've delved deeply into the state of our planet, the causes and effects of marine and atmospheric pollution, and the depletion of the ozone layer. We've examined the stark reality we face if these issues go unchecked. But it's not all doom and gloom. There are ways forward. By making small changes in our daily lives, we can make a big difference. Reducing, reusing, and recycling can decrease pollution. Supporting clean energy can help reduce atmospheric pollution. We can also take action on a larger scale. Communities can advocate for environmental policies, and governments can implement regulations to protect the environment. Education and awareness are also crucial. By understanding the impact of our actions, we can make more environmentally friendly choices. Now it's time to turn knowledge into action. The health of our planet depends on all of us. It's time to take action.
Thanks for watching us share our videos, subscribe our YouTube channel and press the bell icon and stay curious for new uploads.